What's up, guys? We're live. We're live. Is it working? Why did the chat just disappear? Ah. Don't swear in here by saying beta. <laughs> well, Ruben! FIFA Ruben just resubscribed for 21 months. Hello, Sonor Pog Champ. Uh, Ruben is doing his giveaway today, am I correct? So we will raid Ruben in a while. This won't be a very long stream. For, uh, it won't be a very long mobile stream. We'll, we'll raid Ruben at reset. We'll raid Ruben at reset. You won't, you're not going to play an hour and a half. Oh, well then we're good. Do I have beta? Yes. Yes. Um, I do have the beta. But I cannot stream it here. It, it's too much of a bitch. It's because it's Android. This is an iOS phone. And I have it on Android. And to get it, it's a small screen on the Android. And to get it to stream, it's just a bitch. Any market tricks to sell players on beta? Yeah, don't play it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, don't play it. Actually, is honestly selling players on the beta is easy. It's incredibly easy to sell players on the beta. You just got to sell the players that people want. You can't sell the players you earn. You can't sell players that you're buying that's a low OVR. Um, it's, but if you if you're buying suggested players to sell, they're easy to sell. You got the market tax. The problem is, is the the price range is so tight that unless the value of the card is high enough. So that the percentage of the price train, the price range, and you can buy on the the low swing and sell on the upswing. It's really difficult to make any coins whatsoever with the ten percent market tax because of the narrowness of the range. And don't forget that right now, any decent player has a high demand because it's a beta. That's the only reason. It's a beta. And nobody has jack shit. Nobody has a fucking player to use. There's no fucking players in the game. There's no events. So everything that's of consequence is has demand. So, yeah, that's fan-fucking-tastic. As soon as a event gets released, though, any player that you can buy now that has a demand will no longer have a demand. Fucking stupid. It is... Within months, the entire system collapses because every new player that gets released ruins the demand for a player that we've had before. So anything that you can claim in an event is dead because nobody wants a, a card that everybody gets. So there will be so the demand will depreciate. The other problem is, is as the season goes along, anybody who's comparing it to, to console, as the season goes along, console, the players get released, their OVR doesn't change. There may be some special non-tradable cards that you can earn from SBCs, but as you move forward, the player, the, the players don't change. So in console, a player you get at the beginning of the season still has the same intrinsic value halfway through the season. In mobile, the OVR increases. Or it's always getting better. Who wants a player from month one, three months in? 
Not a fucking person. It is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. It is the stupidest system. It is as straightforward, cut and paste as I've ever fucking seen. It is the laziest developing of any fucking game. The whole time, they haven't done shit for the stuff we've asked. All they did was say, hey, everybody wants this, 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 this. And then, hey, that's happening over there. Let's just cut all their fucking code, put it in here, and change the, the language. That's it. It is the worst. It is the biggest giant fuck you to the community we've ever seen out of this whole thing. It's a fucking mess. And it isn't going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. And I think at this point, it's not changing. We've already been told that this new system, the player exchange system, is set in stone. This is what it's going to be. So the only thing, the only thing that can fix this is if they tailor the game, all of FIFA Mobile 22, is if they tailor the game so that every event has a is built in to continue a demand for players that have died. So as a player is OVR'd out because the game progresses, there has to be a need for that player moving forward. So the only possible fix is a squad building challenge or lineup requirement as a template, you know, they're going to cut and paste everything anyway. So make the cut and paste more along the lines of flashbacks. If every event requires older players, golds, silvers, elites, whatever, and it becomes a progressive build. So, you know, instead of like easy, medium, hard, like we have with the skill games, if every event has, okay, you need a 84 max OVR team that follows these lineup requirements to do this portion of the event. And then a 95 OVR max requirement that follows these lineups to do this one. If you don't do that one and that one and that one, if those don't happen, in that order, and that becomes the new template for events, a card that you receive on day one is worth nothing more than a hundred coins quick sell value three months into the system. That's it. There's, there's no other way around it. The way this is set up, unless there are major changes that happen, they have, they have removed the entire market structure and replaced it with a player exchange that is 100% dependent on demand of players and you have a game that the players constantly get better, which in itself deletes the demand for cards that don't appreciate with the system. And since cards can't appreciate with the system, the only reason those cards would hold value is to use them for training. That's it. It's, I can't, I can't even bring myself to stream the game. Once I unlocked the, the, once I unlocked what they're calling the market, um, an hour after I did that, I was done. I, I can't even do it. Did you see the draws for the World Cup playoffs? I haven't seen shit. I haven't done shit <laughs> for days. Ugh. Uh, nothing. And uh, we had Flash Sale yesterday released here. And I tried this to see because it had skill boost. And see, and it, honestly, it's it's been so bad with this uh, with the release of this thing. And what it's done to the upcoming season. 
Like, I didn't even do Icon Spotlight. I haven't done any of this shit. I'm still far behind here. I missed all of that stuff for days. I didn't even open this thing for days. I don't even know. this, And this is the first stream I've had since... This is the first FIFA Mobile stream I've done since the release of the beta. What did I buy in the flash sale? Um, I spent gems in the, the store for skill boost. Um, I think the right now the sentiment that a lot of us have is we're, we're not done with the game. We're not... We're not done with the game to do to you know to just walk away from it. We we want to finish FIFA Mobile 21. We're gonna finish FIFA Mobile 21 to see you know how high OVR we can get. And we'll we'll try FIFA Mobile 22. Honestly, at this point, uh I, honestly, I think I'm going to I'm going to stick with it. 100%. I'm going to stick with it just to see it's it's kind of like when you when there's a building on fire and the the you know the fire trucks are there and shit, you kind of want to see it burn down. And I'm unless shit gets fixed, I just want to be there to roast some marshmallows and watch this fucker implode. That's it. That's that's where I'm at. Which is why we're doing a giveaway this week. Yeah! Event Icon giveaway! And I ain't fucking streaming it because this is the attitude I have right now. Oh, uh, it would be the worst. This See, this is a bad idea to even stream FIFA Mobile right now. Because this is not... The, the, the positivity is not flowing from me today. Ugh. No, I'm going to play. Oh. Yeah, there's going to be no wheel. Um, will I continue to play FIFA Mobile? Yes, I'm going to continue to play. But. Thoughts on the FIFA Mobile 22 beta. Oh. Welcome to the stream. Ah. Uh. 90% of the people just care about the game improvements. They won't. I'm telling you, people will be so outrageously pissed that when that first event pops up and they realize <laughs> that you can't sell anything you're earning from the event. There's, there's going to be... Like, you're going to claim a player and... we. People are upset now, like after rivalries when everything was worth nothing. Every player we claim. How many of you give a shit about Fall Festival right now? Once, I mean, if maybe you're getting, maybe you're claiming, um, you know, Ronaldo, and you, you're looking for Ronaldo and stuff. But if we claim a player now, this late into this game, none of this shit is worth a penny. Like, if I go to claim, here we go, 105 Vitolo, is, can we buy him for a million coins? Let's see, 105. We'll do 2 million just to see. Yeah, look, 1.6, 1.6 mil, 1.5 mil for a player. And this is a few weeks into this event. So, this is the demand. So because we're in a system right now where it's not player to player, it's with a bot, these will still sell if you play if you price them to this level. So if you price Vitolo at this level, you can sell it, right? Because we have this current system. The way things work in the the player to player system, the exchange there is Either the price, the value of these cards are going to be so low that coins become irrelevant 
because there's no reason, there, there's no demand so that their values are related directly to the demand. So event players will be worth nothing. And right now it's the billion coin season where everybody's got a billion coins. I have 322 million right now. It, it doesn't mean anything. I could spend that in a day and earn it back in a week. Well, it's all every the the values are fixed. It's all price fixed, so that they they can keep us from using an open market. They're they're trying to cut down on auto clickers, mass listers, uh, cycle farmers, and coin sale sellers. So I get why they did it. It makes sense from that standpoint. But to do it this way, it immediately negates player value because players will only depreciate nothing will ever earn value nothing will never increase value so there's zero reason for long-term investments unless SBCs and lineup requirements become a staple in the new season and they haven't said that they haven't mentioned it and it's been nothing involved Exactly. So that's what's going to happen. It's they will be nothing but fake, fake demand created. So anybody who's got um, a decent amount of people that are watching will immediately say, oh, my God, Vitola is going to be worth so much money. We're going to buy a bunch of these cards. So then they'll buy a bunch of those cards and then everybody else will see that and immediately buy those cards. But as the process of buying those cards that will increase the price ranges and the value of the player will go up because everybody is buying the same card. The problem is when there was a bot involved, you were selling back to the bot. If we bought cards on the low end, the value became manipulated and you could sell it back to the bot then we were pulling money out of the game. We were creating coins where there were no coins. But the problem is, is with this is a player to player system. When you do that, when someone manipulates it by creating a manufactured investment, they are making money, but they are pulling it directly out of everyone watching them do it. It's coming out of your coin allotment. There's no coins being produced in the market because it is a player exchange the only one that wins is the house because they're taking a tax until the market tax is gone so everything about that is just it's a player to player system so the worst thing you can possibly do is follow someone who says this value is going to go up because them saying that value is going to go up is that is the entire point of them stealing coins from your pocket. So with this new system, there are no long-term investments because it is player to player, straightforward exchange. That's the problem. That's what it is. Unless the only thing that could fix this is if every single event gave value to players that were not brand new it with with SBCs and lineup requirements flashbacks is the only event we had this entire calendar year that could possibly save this new player exchange system that's it ah uh. Yeah, it's an English version of the the um, Asian FIFA Mobile. The other problem is is that the Asian FIFA Mobile is a a closed, very small market. I'm not doing it. I'm not making a public video on this because my opinion on the market is I, I it I don't remember who somebody said it a few minutes ago that it it won't matter because. I'm the only one that feels this way. Seriously, I think I'm the only one that sees this for what it is. Everyone else 
it's they're they're so blindsided by all the pretty stuff in the new in the new release that it, it's it, it's you know that they're not going to listen and I, I think even right now the reason I haven't done the reason I haven't streamed this is because I know right now I sound like a raving lunatic especially since people can go into the beta and make coins. You can easily make coins right now because everything is in demand. Any decent elite or higher has a demand right now. But the only positive is that on day one, silvers and golds had value and you could sell silvers and golds. Now... Now they have no value. They will just sit in your sale bucket because there are 20 to 30 times as many people listing them as are looking for them to buy. Who in the beta right now wants a gold? Who wants a silver? It's, ah, it's insane. And I mean, it shit gets me. It's it's got me so pissed because it. it I, I mean, I look at it as this is something I have played for years, and I love see. And I've had people come at me. I've had I've gotten DMs and I've gotten messages, and they're just like, you know what? Fuck you. You don't like change. You don't like change. You just you you're just don't like change. This change is a good change. You know what? Fuck you. That is not what this is. Never has been. I love change. I am so bored with this current system. I am so bored with this current system that what we've had for a long time. Thanks for the sub. <laughs> I'm so bored with what we've been doing well, for so long. FC Turbo Wagon just resubscribed for two months. I'm the one that came, that came up with all the methods everybody's using. Farming, fishing, cycle farming, uh, master farming, all that stuff. And then people may manipulate it and make it bigger. You know, fishing and then cycle farming became mass listing. And once everyone discovered that there was a, a backward cycle in the system, then that became a problem. But the reason we don't promote certain things, the reason I never promoted cycle farming was because we knew that if everybody understood it and everybody knew that the bot followed a pattern, if the bot, you know, the, the bot followed a buying pattern that you could map and follow that it would pretty much evolve into people with 30 and 40,000 cards using auto clickers and, you know, emulators with um, macros running to be able to put players into the market and kill the bot. So we never promoted it. We never wanted it to happen because it's, you know, the, the bot was there for a reason, but every time they would make a change to the bot, it gave, it gave all of us something new to deal with, which is not a bad thing. When they added suggested prices and farming died, the, yes, it, people were pissed, but at the same time, it gave us an opportunity to come up with something new. And me, as a content creator, I'm making videos. When nothing changes, I can't, I can't put out a new farming video because... I've, what am I going to do? Make the same video five times? What well, point? I mean, that's just stupid, which is why I stopped making videos. I love that there's something new that we can post something new about. But when the something new is a downward spiral, I don't want to be a part of it. I do love change, but not when anyone who can rub two brain cells together sees where this is going to go in three months. I just don't want to be a part of it. Ah, it's just, it's just awful. It's awful. And it, it's, it's bothered me all season that this stuff, it, it's like, 
we've had events release and you look at the event and you're like, oh my God, like rivalries. You look at rivalries and you're like, dude, how do you not see that releasing the SBCs and allowing everyone to purchase all this shit in the market on day one is going to kill the event? How do you not see that? Anybody with, you know, that could, that understands cause and effect can see that that release of rivalries was going to kill rivalries and the value of all the players moving forward. It, you know, and, and we haven't, they haven't fixed anything or done anything all season with that. It, it's, it, it's just, they, they, you know, they, they, It's just frustrating. It's frustrating. Apply for an EA job. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, why didn't we do the new market years ago? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, is the only players that are going to have any value once, once there's a full allotment of players in the system... Once there's a full allotment of players and we're not just trading back and forth base cards, but let's say once team of the week gets added in and we've got two or three events under our belt, there's, you know, the, the value of those cards that aren't new event cards and stuff, they're going to plummet. And I think it, it's, it's just going to take a little bit of time before people realize that the, the value of the cards they have that, you know, they're not going to have anything. It is. It's rough. And so now it's like trying to stay motivated with the current season. I think we've already had reset, right? Trying to stay motivated with the current season is damn near impossible. FHS soccer mobile. Yeah. The problem is, is that I don't think this, the system's going away. They're not, they're, it's too late. It's too late to rebuild what they've done. We are stuck with cut and paste. It is going to be this way. I forgot to do the shit like I care, but, um, it, we're going to, we're stuck with this. It's not going anywhere. We're gonna be we're gonna be using this player exchange system next season. Um, the the big thing is we can't. I don't think we can boycott the the system, but we've got to push them. We've got to push them towards creating a demand for dead players. It's too late, guys. It's too late. They've already announced that this this market is not changing. It's um, it's not going to change. So we have to push. What is this featured offer? Oh well, screw that shit. Let's see how many we get. This is about all we've got to look forward to is boost every day. Can't even tell. I wish it would tell you right there, like how many boosts you got in total. Like what was your total boost? All right. Before, before I go down any other road on this, let's, let's spend a bunch of shit because I can't even remember if I did icon spotlight before reset that I actually did. Um, we're done with fall festival. I, I just, I don't care about any more players. We're not going to do any more ultimate points. Um, I, I, I still need to figure out what the best way to go about using these 7,000 points is. And I just, I don't want any more players. I can't get any more bonus. I just want boost. So what do we got? 
sixteen hundred cost me three thousand. Sixteen hundred for three thousand. If I go to League One. What is that? Twenty two for twelve. So that's forty four for twenty four hundred. So wait a minute, that is 2200, 4400 gets me 2400, or La Liga, gets me 3200 for that much, or I can just go a new one. The other way. Switch the stream to raid. <laughs> um. Yeah, eventually. What was the other one? We we'll just pick a new. How much? How much can you get? What is down the middle? One sixty. So there's three twenty for one sixty. Six twenty. Eleven twenty. Seventeen twenty for six hundred. 760. I think it's all pretty much a wash. It's like two to one, no matter what I do. So let's just let's just forget it. Because this is gonna allow us to claim Figo. Let's just spend it. Why should EA be interested to create a demand for dead players? Because everyone's gonna lose interest in events. When they realize that the only players that they're going to earn that will have any value are the players that are pay to play. The free to play player is going to have to make a decision. Am I going to stay free to play or am I going to quit the game? And I I just I, I think there's going to be a, a, a lot of people three months into this are, are going to kind of fall apart. When are you going to do some videos on YouTube outside of gaming? Car flips. Um, once the spring starts back up. I've been... I haven't uh, put much effort into the car scene. Now that the kids have cars that they're built, nobody's nobody's asked me for anything. Texas Beach stopped working again. I don't even know. This shit's been. Constantly be giving me problems. There, see if that works. Should work. It should work. Texas speech should be working. Should be. I don't know if it's working or not. Show you skill boost. Try it again, Kinsey. All right, we're, we'll do... That's it, right? That's all of the boost I can do with this event. We'll claim Figo. And here's the boost. There's where I'm at. They were close with a couple. Everything's at 30 except for second striker. Everything's at 30 except for second striker, except reflexes is already at 32. 
Japanese market is so dead. The rarest card is not even selling. Icons are auctionable. I packed Maldini Prime event icon four days ago. Listed him for eighty-seven million. His value is ninety mil and still not sold. Kinsey yeah. King twelve says this beta stock exchange is shit. FHS crazy eyes. FHS crazy eyes. FHS crazy eyes. Chicken wing cans. Bob's says testing TTS. The it works now. I got it fixed. All right, let's. Commit. Let's commit to Milner as my right wing. We're not even going to use Figo. We're not even going to put him in. I don't even want to check it. I don't care how good he is or what he can do. We're transferring the ranks to Milner. There. 213. Two thirteen. Figo is gone. Uh, we we're gonna burn all them icons. I don't use. I'm not gonna use any of them. Milner is a much better right wing anyway. Yes, you know exactly what to expect next season. That doesn't mean that the. Um, that doesn't mean that the. Uh, well, how do I say this? That the events can be different. Milner's, Milner's better than Figo. Yes. In my opinion, absolutely. All Chicken right. Wing Cans Bobs says, isn't the new FM22 not going to have season updates? When would they update the market when it does to shit? Yeah, I don't know. I... I the Asian, it, it just runs the same thing. I heard you are a soccer coach, so I wanted to ask for those who want to go pro, where should you look? Honestly, that's a good question. If you're a high school player or a college player, the way, if you're an American, see, that it's easy around here. There are, so, there's three, there's three semi-pro and professional leagues in the United States, they all of those offer uh, open tryouts almost everywhere, especially in the MLS. MLS teams often open hold open tryouts, and it costs you. It's it's called open tryouts, but you have to pay to to try out. That way, they don't just get like a, a huge bunch of players coming in to do it. Um, let's say FC Cincinnati. They held open tryouts. It was 50 bucks a person to come try out for FC Cincinnati. You got an FC Cincinnati t-shirt. They held open tryouts, and they picked up like five or six locals from Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois that all showed up for FC Cincinnati's open tryouts. Um, they're all pay-to-play tryouts. They do that because they if it was just an open tryout, you'd have every dipshit that thought they were worthy show up they they do that just to kind of keep uh the riffraff away from the tryouts mls teams and find the tryouts yes but there's also we do have a lot of european clubs that come over um pulisic got picked up um at a at a camp based in it was in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, somewhere that um, they came in and were looking for players. They they were doing they were holding open camps. We always have here in Ohio. We always have uh, open camps for academy players. They're looking for fourteen to seventeen to eighteen year olds, like that range. And you can find camps around here that are looking for those kind of players from Bayern. Dortmund, Man U, Liverpool. Liverpool runs an academy here in Ohio. There's a Liverpool academy up north. We have a Dortmund academy down here. MLS teams all have academies. We have, you know, multiple academies around here. As, as far as it is sports go in the United States, it's the easiest. It is the easiest sport to become a professional in. Because there's there's so many opportunities and so many teams. Then you have teams like the Columbus Crew, 
who have a roster that is out. I mean, it's just insane. The roster is huge. They're full rosters. It's like 180 people. They have, and you can look it up and see like what their salary is. The last year, their number five keeper, number five keeper for Columbus Crew, who had never seen a minute of playtime, number five keeper. Uh, it was it was like forty five thousand dollars a year U.S., which is a livable wage. I mean, you're not like you know rich by any means. It's about the same salary that someone who manages a grocery store makes. But I mean, you don't even have any playing time. You're just training. And then they, they take all of those players that are like third and fourth tier rostered for the Columbus crew. And they double as trainers and Academy personnel that travel around and do all the different stuff. It's that kind of thing. It's, it's huge. I mean, it's a, it's a big system here. And, but the problem is, is all of the, the American professionals, uh, that are decent that play in the MLS, not the ASL or the, the UPL. If, if you're in the MLS, which is the one that's mostly broadcast that everybody knows about, you've got the United soccer league. You've got, um, the ASL, the adult soccer league, which are semi-pro systems. Those, you know, they, they do pay some of the players, but they don't have, um, they, they're all American players, but like MLS, if you look at any team, in the MLS, their starters and their reserves are almost, they're probably 80% non-Americans because everyone comes here to play. Uh, they come here for college. They get picked up in college and, um, the, you know, it's like my son who played in college, their team the varsity squad for his for his college was i think there were more german nationals more german nationals on his college team that were starting varsity than there were um american on varsity and jv they were it was it was i think there were six or seven german nationals out of their starting 11 they had um one from Honduras, Philippines, uh, three or four from England, one Irish kid from Ireland out of their starting 11 for a college team. And then all of those players got picked up. They all played in the MLS's um, spring league, which is non-paid. You can go get picked up in there and play it. It's it's nuts. If 1 million kids want to become professional footballers, max 10,000 make it. I don't know. I mean, I've I've coached multiple kids who are Kinsey getting King paid to play. Green teats. Green teats. Green teats. SM or Cafe Chess Crazy mm. Eyes. Raid, raid, raid. Let's see. Is Ruben... Ruben streaming now. Been in Academy for seven years and have decided to at least try to go pro here. That's why. Yeah. Um, our Academy has started a semi pro team that, uh, they will be applying for the, the ASL in 2024. Does Ruben use a wheel? I think he does marbles. Doesn't doesn't he do marbles? Yeah, see my son, that was his his goal was to to play professional. And he's playing semi-professional now. But I I think he's going to be done after next year because 
he'll be going Chicken into... Chicken Wing Cans Bobs says one of these days I am gonna claim the guide a raid with channel points and guide the raid to Amaranth or Indie Fox. We went to um, Deadwood Jedi the other day, but all he kept talking about was manscaping. It was kind of disturbing. Oh, yeah, my son who wanted to play, he's still playing now, but he went ahead this year and went the route of uh, licensing, and he's now coaching. So he's coaching Academy. <sighs> Rated the painter. Oh, yeah, where she just sat there and painted her tit. She's just like this for, for like 10 minutes was is, is quite disturbing. Easy King 12 says, give me one reason why you shouldn't claim five meters in coin packs. Five wow. million in coins. Uh, because we're going to raid Ruben. She was painting her tits. Yes. It was very weird. It was body painting. And she just kept rubbing a nipple over and over. And it's it's like she was sitting on a bed reading. Oh, Jesus. She was sitting on a bed watching a laptop next to her. And all of the, um, the watching the scroll of what everybody was typing and shit. And... She's just, just watching it and just painting the whole time. It was so disturbing. How much does an academy coach make? Um, depends. Uh, usually they, they make, depending upon the academy, anywhere from like 3000 to 8000 per team. And then, uh, you know, you, they usually get paid for a commitment commitment levels too so like if you're if you're running camps and stuff like that you make money for the camps there's very few that that becomes their full-time job unless you're like the academy director um like me i'm the academy administrator for where i'm at and i'm like i answer to the director and it's it's not full-time it is 100 percent part-time i couldn't do it full-time there's just not enough. There's not enough hours to go. Yeah, that's yearly. That's why a lot of academy coaches have five, six teams. Not a month, a year. It's like you might make, let's say you make $4,000 to coach a team. That's for a year. That's a year commitment to that one team. That's why academy coaches have multiple teams. You'll see you'll see a decent coach who's who's running youth teams and they'll have six, seven teams. Oh. When are the next weekly videos coming? Uh Wednesday. Next Wednesday. What's happening today? We're about to raid Ruben. I think, you know what I'm going to do? I, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raid Ruben. I'm going to raid Ruben with this stream. And then I'm going to kill the stream and restart it. And we'll play raid. We'll play raid. So if you guys want in on the giveaway, Ruben's doing the giveaway today. Run, I'm not claiming the five mil because I, I want to get off of here. Uh, I'll give, I'm giving Kinsey back her points. I'm going to come back on and play raid. I'm going to come back on and play raid. How do you become a coach? Uh, here he, 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 there's a, a full, um, licensing structure you have to go through. And then they, they're in the United States. We have, it starts out 
Thanks for the resub. Well, tickle mutadies. TMC1 just resubscribed for 16 months. See, we have grassroots, which is your your online license. And then we have uh we go grassroots, and then you have all the different tiers of the field. So 7v7, 9v9, 11v11. Then there is a module that you get. You can get grab the module coaching license. Then it goes into the alphabet system. So it's the F license, the E license, D, C, B, and A. And then to once you get into the alphabet system, you have to renew them so every so often. And depending upon the higher tier of the alphabet is the more hours that's required to get a higher license. So like when you go from uh, the module system into the alphabet system to grab the F license, it's like a weekend course. And then the E license, it's like, I don't know, maybe 20 hours to get the E license. And then the D license is a multi-phase license that requires you to work. That one you actually have to travel to get. Uh, that that one you travel to get it D license is where I'm at with a D you can pretty much you can coach all ages and you can coach in all leagues go um, all the way up uh, to national level teams with a D once you go to the C license those that's like the beginning into the administration part of it like um, academy directors are usually a higher license. Um, my mentor and my director is an A license, but he's also been college coach. College coach requires, um, you know, a higher tier B A license level, and then MLS. Almost all of those guys are A license or higher to go into it. It's it, it's a rough. The, the licensing structure, it, once you get into like the E, D, C level, it's a lot of work. It, it's a lot of, of time involved for the licensing. As, as like an A license instructor, it's, I think, what, 80 hours? It's 80 hours to obtain, 80 hours of instruction, and then you have to do so many hours of actual coaching with, with a licensed person watching you to to evaluate then you then there's a course you have to follow then every year you have to have so many hours of continuing education it's to to go that high to go to an a license it's a commitment it is a complete commitment all right get ready we're gonna raid ruben for those that want to stick with fifa mobile and once once we're uh once the raid goes through to Ruben, I will get back on and we'll play Chicken raid for anybody that wants to come. Says planes go wow and boats go bird trip trip. So weird. Thanks for hanging out, guys. This is the first mobile stream of the week. Sorry I get so uh, enraged. All right, guys, get ready. Here comes Ruben, the raid for Ruben. And then if you want to see raid or stick around for that, I will be back on in about five minutes. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. As long as you guys Chicken keep watching, I'll keep streaming. Pap, pap, car, car. Thank you.